If you're looking for the best headset on the market, do you need to drop $150 to get the quality you want? SteelSeries is notorious for their very well received gaming mouses or mice, but does that tier of quality carry over to their other peripherals as well? More specifically, the Arctis 7. Well, let's find out. Hey what's up guys my name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back for another review. If you like what you see here consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. Alright so let's get down to it. $150 for a gaming headset is a lot but it's not unpopular to see headsets up in this range anyways. I'll list off some of the features and then discuss my opinions on them. So these are completely wireless with a quote unquote lag free wireless audio and the headset connects to a USB powered wireless dongle with a 2.4 gigahertz frequency with a range up to 12 meters or 40 feet. The headset rocks the S1 speaker drivers with an acclaimed DTS 7.1 surround sound exclusively on PC. Surround sound is not available on Mac, Xbox, PS4, VR, or other devices. On a full charge, the headset will have a battery life up to 24 hours. The Arctis 7 is charged through a micro USB connection from the USB. USB dongle. There is a retractable microphone that is flexible to point into any desired direction. When the microphone is muted, the tip of the microphone emits a red LED. The headset control buttons are located on the bottom of the headset which includes a mute button for the mic, volume dial for the speakers, a chat mix dial which adjusts the volume between the in-game volume and the chat volume which works on PC and Mac exclusively. These even come with a downloadable software to adjust voice settings which I'll get to in a little bit. For construction and comfort, the Arctis 7 is constructed out of aluminum with a ski goggle elastic band to sit on top of the head. I actually prefer to have an elastic band on the headset as they suspend the frame from digging into my skull after 30 minutes. I think it's something that most headsets should implement. The ski band adjusts by undoing the velcro and retracting the band from the slit into the top of the frame to the desired length to best suit your needs. The cups on the Arctis 7 are nothing special to me in terms of comfort. I mean, they get the job done, but the fabric isn't that soft for paying $150. So they do keep my ears from getting hot with the porous fabric channeling air to my ears. That I do like. Fabric themselves don't feel that comfortable as well as the cushion after 30 minutes. The frame of the headset is very lightweight, which I like a lot. With the elastic headband, the headset just feels like it's floating on my head. Coupled with the wireless aspect of this headset, it's not restrictive at all. I feel free to walk about and move around without a wire attached to my head. Overall comfort is pretty good even though the ear cups are not super soft and they don't feel comfortable after 30 minutes. And as for the construction, from what I could tell, these are well built. The outside of the cups have a rubberized surface that don't really creak or squeak when I squeeze them. And like I said earlier, the top band is made out of aluminum. But how did these bad boys sound? Is it truly lag free? Well, in in terms of lag, in my honest opinion, I could not recognize any. Maybe to someone who has an incredible reactionary skill set, then they may notice a slight lag. But for me, as a filthy casual, I couldn't recognize any. I tested this out by opening up FL Studio, pressing play on and off repeatedly to listen to any lag between me pressing play on the keyboard, to the image of my monitor showing the song starting, to the sound being relayed to my ears. Honestly, I could not notice any lag. I played some Titanfall 2 and a couple other games, and again, no lag. For the surround sound in the headset, it was decent at best. I mean, you can try as hard as you want to get a 7.1 surround sound coming out of two directional sources, but you most likely won't be able to replicate it. The Arctis 7 does not fully replicate 7.1 surround sound. It's almost impossible to. My Turtle Beaches from a couple years ago had good surround sound and spatial awareness for its time, and is definitely subpar compared to the Arctis 7, but not by a whole lot. The spatial awareness is limited and at its best is okay for what it is. I mean, they are completely wireless, so replicating 7.1 one surround sound is going to be difficult to begin with, but I will say this though, despite the lack of true 7.1 surround sound, the headset still had me partially immersed into my gaming environment, which I enjoyed. The sound quality on the other hand is relatively flat, it lacks depth, bass, and rich sound altogether. Even after adjusting the various volumes from both my PC, headset, and included software, the headset still sound really flat. I get that they're wireless, but truthfully, they don't sound any better than my $15 earbuds. My $15 earbuds have a better frequency range and response and depth than the Arctis 7. I was pretty disappointed with this since I have other gaming headsets for one-fifth of the price of this headset and still sound better than these. 
so the audio quality is definitely lacking. Last thing to touch on is the microphone quality. And like most gaming headsets, these don't sound high quality at all. I don't know why, but to this day, headsets with a decent microphone are almost non-existent. And you could argue the fact that, yeah, the microphone is really small. And yes, that is true. My lavalier mic from Amazon has much better quality and was only $22. Even after installing the drivers and the software and adjusting the voice levels, the mic still sounded faint and muffled. Here's what the sound like. What is up? This is a test of the microphone quality of the Steel Series Arctis 7 headphones. And this is what my lavalier mic sounds like. $22 and this is what it sounds like. Really not a bad audio solution. And for reference, that was my friend who recorded his voice, not me, but still no different from any other mid-tier headsets. So my overall thoughts on the Arctis 7? I like the simple aesthetic and the camo headband. The comfort of these are enjoyable and I can wear them for long periods of time, except for the discomfort on my ears. There's a good amount of volume adjustments and headset controls both directly from the headset and the software. The wireless capability of these are all around solid. You can go quite a distance with these without any distortion and the battery life is solid. The build quality is very good and everything is well made for the most part and the fabric on the ear cushion could be better in my opinion and also the foam inside as well the sound quality is subpar and flat and the 7.1 surround sound is good enough to be somewhat immersed at least for me but don't expect a true 7.1 surround sound experience from these and lastly the microphone is muffled and light the software adjusts some voice options and you can enable a live feedback of your voice to the headset to make proper adjustments but for some reason the mic quality sounds better from the playback than it does during game or audio recording i do like the feature of the retract microphone though something to certainly keep for future incarnations yeah yeah roger roger for 150 dollars personally i couldn't spend the money to justify buying this at least in my experience i'm not going to try to rag on steel series for this headset but i do think there are better options out there and not particularly gaming headsets but perhaps just buying a microphone and wireless headphones. The Arctis 7 do pack a lot of features and functionality into a headset while also being wireless. I don't know if that's what causes the lack in microphone and sound quality, but that's one of my main quirks with gaming headsets is that they usually sacrifice in quality in another area for everything that they're trying to balance in an all-in-one solution. So there's a lot left to be desired with this headset and hopefully SteelSeries can make the following improvements to make one of the best gaming headsets. They have incredible wireless capabilities with great comfort to make a very free feeling headset. But for the other reasons I stated, I cannot recommend this headset for $150. I think there's a lot of better options out there. Yes, there is also a software that comes with this, but that also does not help into justifying the $150 price tag. I think that that software is very, very useful, but for the quality that's coming out of this headset, it does not do much for the headset itself and almost renders itself completely useless. Hope this doesn't sound like I'm trying to bash Steel Series. They make other great gaming peripherals and I'm excited for their future products, but these do not live up to the level of quality as some of their other products. Hope you all enjoyed the review and found it helpful. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. If you have any other questions that you felt like I left out that I didn't cover over this review, let me know. But thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.